Good morning. It's Jeff Christian from CPM Group. It's Friday, the 4th of December. We've made it through 11 twelfths of the year so far. Uh, and as those of you who read some of our research know, we've been saying, listen, uh, the difference between 2020 and 2021 will be a number on a calendar. Uh, we think all of the conditions that we have today will be continuing next year. Just because we're changing years doesn't mean that all of the bad stuff that's been happening is going to go away. COVID it will be worse in January and February than it was in December by all reasonable measures. Uh, so it's going to be tough. The economy is going to be in worse shape in many ways. We saw some uh, employment and unemployment figures today that were half as optimistic as some of the optimistic economists were saying that they would be. Uh, basically, I think they were in line with us. Our view has been that gold could see some weakness in December still. Uh, we saw the price go from $1,900 around election day to 1766 briefly last week. It sprung back up and it was trading around 1845 uh, this morning before we started this recording. Our expectation is the price could trade between, say, 1780 and 1850, 1860 over the next week or two. In other words, there is a potential for another spike down in the price uh, in December. By January, February, we think the price will be strengthening. We're looking for about a 10% increase in the annual gold price next year. Uh, and we're looking for strong prices in January and February of next year. So we think that that could um, happen. I wanted to talk a little bit away from that. That's our view, you know, potential for some weakness, but basically a consolidation period in December, higher prices in January, February, March, uh, and then going forward, uh, maybe some calming in the markets because the economy, the pandemic, and maybe even the political environment might get a little bit better uh, beyond March. Uh, and um, we still think that prices will move higher and move to record prices uh, levels, but it might be 2023, 2024 before we see that. I wanted to talk a little bit about the gold confiscation of 1933. And I'm not so much interested in talking about the gold confiscation as I am ta interested in talking about uh, FDR's inauguration. FDR was elected in 1932. At the time, uh, it was a very heated uh, con contest. Uh, the country was four years into the Great Depression. Unemployment was something north of 20 percent, I believe. Uh, many companies had closed. Many people had lost their homes. Things were on balance about four times worse than they are now. The country was extremely divided. FDR won. And the inaugural committee suggested that he not have a parade after he'd been sworn in at the uh, Capitol building, this tradition for the president to have a parade from the Capitol building down Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House. And um, the country was in such bad shape and it was so divided that the inaugural committee said it's probably dangerous to do that. We had lost several thousand banks. People had drawn out almost all of their money from the banks. There had been runs on banks in 1929 and throughout the ensuing four years. People had poured a lot of their wealth into gold. Uh, there was about 54 million ounces of gold coins that were believed to uh, be housing much of the nation's wealth. The collapse of the banks, the lack of investments, the lack of savings in banks uh, thwarted the economic recovery. And things were bad. And FDR said, look, when I get inaugurated, the first thing I'm going to do is close the banks. I'm going to have a, a bank holiday, and we're going to try to stabilize this. He gave that speech where he famously said the only thing that Americans had to fear was fear itself. And then he had a parade. The inaugural committee was so worried that they lined Pennsylvania Avenue with machine gun nests, with machine guns trained on the American citizens who had come out to see their new president. He got to the White House. The inauguration back then was on March 4th, and he closed the banks. He ordered a bank holiday, and he closed the banks for about a week. He had also said that he was going to call in the gold coins 
and get people to turn in their gold holdings in the United States to get money back into the banks to help stabilize the economy and to provide the credit uh, availability that was needed to get us out of the depression. When he reopened the banks about a week later, there were massive lines in front of banks across the country, massive lines of people lining up to put their money back into the bank. They were bringing their gold coins in and turning them into dollars and depositing the dollars in banks. You went in a week from a country that was so divided that the army was training machine guns on citizens who were patriotic enough to come out to see an inaugural parade, to a situation where a lot of people who didn't like FDR and thought he was a socialist were actually turning their gold in and getting dollars. Now, he actually did it. There's a lot of nonsense about the gold confiscation. And I think it's very important to understand what was going on and to understand the context today. In terms of the context today, back then, gold probably represented 33% or more of financial wealth. So when people were hoarding gold, it sucked an enormous amount of money out of the economy. Banks didn't have dollars to lend to corporations and individuals. Mortgages rolled over. You, you had foreclosures. Uh, gold was much more important then. Today, gold constitutes something like 0.5, 0.6% of financial wealth on a global basis. And in the United States, it's even lower. Gold's inconsequential to the financial system. If people decided to hoard gold, uh, the price of gold will skyrocket, which we actually expect over the next few years, uh, because we don't see this administration fixing all of the long-term problems that are facing the United States. But it'd be inconsequential to the monetary system, because gold is such a small part of financial wealth. So from the perspective of today, the idea of a gold confiscation is nonsense. And anybody who tells you you should worry about gold confiscation either doesn't know what he's talking about or is trying to scare you into buying gold from him. Now, going back to 1933, FDR was inaugurated on March 4th. He actually issued the Executive Order 6102 calling in the gold on the 5th of April. So a month lapsed before he called it in. At the beginning, the treasurer estimated that he had issued about 58 million ounces of gold in coin form and gold certificates through the end of February 1933. In that month, before he actually issued the voluntary executive order saying, turn in your gold, 40 million of that 58 million ounces was turned in. And it was turned in at the existing price. He didn't start raising the price until later, after April 5th. Another 4 million ounces was turned in in the first month after he had turned in, uh, issued the executive order. He had said the executive order on April 5th said, you know, turn in your gold and coins and gold certificates by May 1st. And in that month, investors turned in another 4 million ounces of gold, or one-tenth of what they had turned in voluntarily before the executive order was even issued. Another 2 million ounces trickled in in the uh, ensuing nine months, and the Treasury reported that 8.2 million ounces was probably lost or just not turned in. And you actually had the right to keep uh, one or two coins from every years of mintage uh, so people could continue to hold on to some of their gold. So the reality is that the confiscation was based on citizens voluntarily turning in their gold. The government did not coerce anybody. The government didn't go through safety deposit boxes, homes, offices, or any place else looking for gold. And most people who turned in their gold turned it in before the executive order was even issued. There was one fellow who was prosecuted because he wanted to challenge the whole thing and he wanted to be a martyr. And so he refused to turn in his gold 
and he made a big public deal out of it. And the treasury said, you know, hey, babe, if you want to do that, come on down. And they arrested him. Contrast that voluntary gold confiscation to what went on under Republican governments in the previous decade during Prohibition, where they did break into houses and they did take goods and they did steal stuff and they did pour it down the drains. My poor grandma, grandmother uh, was a bootlegger. She made Italian with, uh, wine uh, to sell. She was a widow and she made wine to sell to support her, herself and her four children during uh, Prohibition. And they came in and they arrested her. And because she didn't have any childcare at the time, she, they arrested her four children, all of whom were probably less than 10 years old. And the four children, the dog and my grandmother all went down to uh, the jail. Because during prohibition, the Republican governments came into your house and broke stuff up and took what they found. By the way, when she died in 1964, and we were going through her estate, we found um, a bill from the St. Louis Police Department for the dry cleaning of a couple police uniforms because when they were arresting her, she threw, uh, she pushed a couple of policemen into a vat of wine and they charged her uh, to have those suits cleaned. I think this is all important and relevant because A, you are hearing spooks say, oh my God, they're going to confiscate the gold. You're hearing People who don't know the difference between feudalism and socialism saying that the Democrats, even Joe Biden, is a socialist. And if you think Joe Biden is a socialist, my goodness. You can see on the wall behind me, I studied Soviet politics and history uh, in the university. And when that car ran into a bunch of people on a pedestrian mall in Trier, Germany, this week, I said to my wife, oh, that's the birthplace of Karl Marx. And she groaned and said, you're probably one of the few people in America who knows that. Uh, but that's beside the point. The reality is that we don't have socialism coming. We have greater regulations. We probably have higher taxes. But we have the same political system that has caused all of the problems since 1947, 1950, 1952, 1960. We have decades worth of problems caused by a corporate democratic and Republican political system. And that corporate political system is still in power. Uh, changed CEOs, we'll change a few other things, but we still have all of those things that cause these problems that we're facing now in place. It's not socialism that we have to worry about. And it's not necessarily gold confiscation. About that, I think that's about enough for the, today. I'll talk to you more next week. Uh, stay clean, stay healthy, and stay away from people. Take care.